Greetings, friends around the world. This is Bible News Prophecy Program. My name is Alexander Sashevelich, and welcome. Well, Christmas is coming up, and as you can see, this madness of this festivity uh, and the spirit of, of, of festivity and winter festivals has uh, absorbed, it seems, so many nations and so many individuals. Well, there is so much we can talk about Christmas myths that uh, I think it might take even two of these programs to cover them all. But there is one thing that appeared this week. It's Christmas myths apologist who overlooked writings from Roman Catholic scholars. Now, uh, our Sunday visitor put up the following by a Roman Catholic apologist named Jimmy Akin, A-K-I-N, and he wrote dispelling some common myths about Christmas. So here is what he published on this www or our Sunday visitor.com. Every year, he says, various myths about Christmas circulate. One of the most common ideas is that Christmas is based on a pagan holiday, so it's really pagan in origin. End of the quote. Well, dear friends and listeners, yes, it is pagan in origin. Plus, December 25th was not adopted by the Church of Rome until the 4th century. In fact, the Catholic Encyclopedia teaches that, here is the quote from this source, Christmas was not among the earliest festivals of the Church. Christmas... Irenaeus and Tertullian omitted from their list of feasts. Oregon, glancing perhaps at the discreditable imperial Natalitia, asserts in one of his homilies that in the scriptures sinners alone, not saints, celebrate their birthdays. Arnobius can still ridicule the birthdays of the gods. Uh, and uh, that was all published, in a way, in... Uh, in Catholic Encyclopedia, uh, that will be edition 2003. So, what the Catholic Encyclopedia has quoted is true. In fact, now the World Book Encyclopedia, published in Chicago in 1966, volume 3, pages 48, 408 to 416, says, In 354 of our era, Bishop Liberius of Rome ordered the people to celebrate on December 25th. He probably chose this date because the people of Rome only observed it as the Feast of Saturn, celebrating the birthday of the sun. And this pub publication, this uh, information was published in uh, C. Christ E. H. Christmas, World Book Encyclopedia, Volume 3, Field Enterprises Education Corporation, Chicago, 1966. It needs to be understood, friends, that some scholarly sources believe that the celebration in Rome of Christmas may have began a couple of decades earlier by Constantine the Great, the Roman Emperor, but none we are aware of suggest it was prior uh, Constantine in the 4th century. Jimmy Akin, however, further wrote in this article, it sometimes claimed that Jesus couldn't have been born on December 25th because Luke reports that shepherds were tending their flocks the night Jesus was born. And this is a quote from the uh, Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verse 8. It would have been too cold for that in December, so Jesus must have been born in a warmer time of the year. Yes, uh, dear friends, uh, the fact that uh, he was certainly born in winter, it's a total nonsense. Because again, according to the Catholic Encyclopedia, that is not nonsense as it states. Uh, authorities, quote from the encyclopedia again, moreover differ as to whether shepherds could or would keep flocks exposed during the nights of the rainy season. Uh, Martindale uh, is the author of this in the uh, Catholic Encyclopedia and is under the, under the uh, title of Christmas. While it is not impossible for shepherds to be in the field at night in late December, that was not their ancient practice anyway. Normally, shepherds stop spending the night with their flocks outside during the fall because of cold and rain, of course. Now, the Catholic Encyclopedia seems to recognize that, unlike many people. Jimmy Akin further wrote, What about the claim that celebrating Christmas on December 25th is based on a pagan holiday? Even if that were true, so what? He asks. Well, let us respond to him and to the rest of the world. What? Jesus taught, note, scriptures in uh, this program were translated by Roman Catholic scholars. Here is the book of uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verse 24. God is spirit, and those who worship God must worship in spirit and truth. And then in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, verse 7. And in vain, this is a quote from uh, the words of our 
and teachings of our Lord and Savior. And in vain do they worship me, teaching doctrines and precepts of men. Of course, it is vain and bearing false witness to deceive children about Santa Claus, who is supposedly coming from town. If you wonder about Santa Claus, Santa Claus is actually originates from the Greek mythology. It's a god Kronos, from whom we get the word chronology, chronicles. And it's a deity which seethes uh, the lives of young children. So it's a, it is a horrible, evil deity that people promote, sadly, every Christmas season. And uh, it comes from the Dutch immigrants to America who celebrated St. Nicholas. So they call him St. Nicholas, St. Nicholas, and then later it was shortened to St. Santa Claus. So there is a right way and a wrong way to live and worship God. Do not base this on your emotional feelings about what is right. Because in Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 8, you must not behave as we are behaving here today, each of you doing what he see himself sees fit. So God has given very clear commandments what is to be kept and what is not to be kept. When Yahweh, your God, has annihilated the nations confronting you, whom you are going to dispossess, and when you have dispossessed them and made your home in their country, beware of being entrapped into copying them after they have been destroyed to make way for you, and do not inquire about their gods, saying, How did these nations worship their gods? I am going to do the same. I am quoting this from Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 29 and onwards. So now we are in verse 31. This is not the way to treat Yahweh your God, for in honor of their gods, they have done everything detestable that Yahweh hates. Verse 32, What I command thee, that only do thou to the Lord, neither add anything, nor diminish, or take away. Just like we read also in the last book of the Bible, in the book of Revelation, Woe to those who take away or add to the word of God. Consider please something else that the Apostle Paul wrote in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4. Let's pick it up in verse uh, 17. So this I say to you and attest to you in the Lord. Do not go on living the empty-headed life that the Gentiles live. Intellectually they are in the dark and they are estranged from the life of God because of the ignorance which is the consequence of closed minds. Their sense of right and wrong once dulled, they have abandoned all self-control and pursued to access every kind of uncleanness. Verse 20, now that is hardly the way you have learned Christ, unless you fail to hear him properly when you were taught when, what the truth is in Jesus. You were to put aside your old self, which belongs to your old way of life and is corrupted by following illusory desires. This is Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 through 22. So friends, what do we take out of this? Well, Christians, or if you want true Christians who follow the Bible, true followers of Christ, are to put off pagan ways and live according to the truth, not longing for improper traditions. In fact, if you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, the Apostle Paul further wrote on the subject. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, let's pick it up in verse 19. What then? Do I say that what is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? Or that the idol is anything? But the things which the heathens sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that you should be made partakers with devils. You cannot drink the chalice of the Lord and the chalice of devils. You cannot be partakers of the table of the Lord and of the table of devils. So to answer Jamie Akin's so what, the Bible says we are not to adopt pagan practices, which the Apostle Paul says are from devils. Then in his article... Jimmy Akin further wrote the following Some sources link Christmas link Christmas with the Roman holiday Saturnalia which was a festival in honor of the god Saturn. But there is a major problem claiming that Christmas is an alternative to Saturnalia. This Roman festival was originally celebrated December 17th though by the time of the Republic it extended through December 23rd. So Christmas wasn't held until after Saturnalia was over. Friends, first consider that there are normally many Christmas parties before December 25th. 
Second, consider that many customs of Saturnalia are part, indeed, of Christmas celebrations. And third, notice something from a then Roman Catholic scholar named Tertullian in the early 3rd century. Here is the quote from Tertullian on Idolatry, chapter 10. And uh, it's American edition of 1885. And you can find it online, edition copyright, 2004 by K. Dot night. So here is what Tertullian wrote in the early 3rd century. So keep in mind, this is 3rd century uh, after, the, after the death of and, re and resurrection from the dead of Jesus Christ. So the early 3rd century Tertullian. The Minervalia are as much Minervas as the Saturnalia Saturns. Saturns, which must necessarily be celebrated even by little slaves at the time of the Saturnalia. New Year's gifts, likewise, must be caught at and the Septimontium kept. And all the presents of midwinter and the feast of dear kinsmanship must be exacted. The schools must be wreathed with flowers. The flamens, wives, and the idlers sacrifice. The school is honored on the appointed holidays. The same thing takes place on an idol's birthday. Every pomp of the devil is frequented. Who will think that these things are befitting to a Christian master unless it be he who shall think them suitable likewise to one who is not a master? End of the quote. So this is from Tertullian on Idolatry, chapter 10. And it was American edition, published in American edition, 1885. Online edition, copyright 2004. So, this is the response to the question, and so what? Around the time of Tertullian, the Roman bishop Sephirinus, who was uh, the Roman bishop from 199 until 2000, uh, 217, and another bishop, Callistus, who was his successor from two, 217 and ruled until 222 from Rome. So after the time of Tertullian, the Roman bishop Sephirinus and Callistus, they had a reputation of compromise and corruption and this is confirmed by such Roman Catholic saints such as Hippolytus and allowed people in their church that compromised with paganism, etc. So, having this in mind, we will need to indeed pay attention now what else Tertullian wrote. But however, the majority of Greco-Roman so-called Christians have by this time induced the belief in their mind that it is pardonable if at any time they do what the heathens do, for fear the name be blasphemed. To live with heathens is lawful, to die with them is not. Let us live with all, let us be glad with them, out of community of nature, not of superstition. We are peers in soul, not in discipline, fellow possessors of the world, not of error. But if we have no right of communion in matters of this kind with strangers, how far more wicked to celebrate them among brethren who can maintain or defend us by us the Saturnalia and New Year's and Midwinter's festivals and Matronalia are frequented presents come and go New Year's gifts games join their noise banquets join their din oh better fidelity of the nations to their own sect which claims no solemnity of the Christians for itself not the Lord's Day not Pentecost, not it, it they had known them, would they have shared with us. For they would fear, lest they should seem to be Christians. We are not apprehensive, lest we seem to be heathens. This is again from Tertullian's work on idolatry chapter, this time chapter 14. And it is excerpted from anti nicene Fathers, volume 3, edited by Alexander Roberts and James Donaldson, American edition, 1885. Online edition, it's copyright 2004 by K. Knight. So, in this passage, Tertullian seems to be referring to 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 1. Well, friends, we'll continue with this myth of, the, of Christmas. As I said, there is so much to cover. So, uh, for more information, you can go to www.biblenewsprophecy.net. And uh, for more in-depth analysis of the trends and world events. My name is Alexander Sasha Vedic and this was the uh, Bible News Prophecy Program. Until next time, goodbye friends.